It's the kind of business idea that you can only come up with if you've remained a child at heart. The staff look on enraptured as Bermsterling's newest model is put through its paces. It's Stevenson's Rocket L1, which was built in England in 1829. But something isn't quite working as it should. Twenty people work here, and fiddling around is part and parcel of the job. The small components are painstakingly assembled by hand until everything works like clockwork. Hermann Böhm is the company's CEO. He started building miniature model engines two decades ago. Model vintage cars are a successful new line. This model of a 1915 Ford T, the first ever automobile to go into mass production, is one of the products that's proving popular. The ethanol flame heats up the air in the back of the chamber so that it expands and moves forward into the cooler area and is turned into mechanical energy there. The differences in temperature propel the piston rods. It's as simple as that. There's a continual movement from hot to cold and back again. When the Scottish pastor Robert Stirling invented the hot air engine in 1816, he was looking for a way of pumping water more easily. His engine even competed with the steam engine for a while. But few people have heard of Stirling today. In the 1950s, Phillips tried to build a new and more powerful version of the hot air engine, but production was ceased, maybe because it wasn't an economic success, or perhaps because the oil lobby was too strong. At the moment, Greenpeace has a low temperature Stirling motor on its homepage, which enables water to be pumped in Africa with solar energy or with warm water channeled from roof pipes. To that extent, it's a really great thing. Oil temporarily threw a spanner in the works of the Stirling Motors progress, but only temporarily, perhaps. Berm is convinced that its hour will come. He wants to make the principle of the hot air engine better known. The miniatures are produced to scale on the computer. But the actual production depends on classic engineering methods. A miniature machine like this will set you back anything from 150 euros upwards. These models stand on the desks of hundreds of executives worldwide. And the next project is already on the planning board. To build a miniature of this classic helicopter, that's why he has a full-scale one parked outside. The engine specialist is fascinated by the way that everything on it moves. He really likes the idea of seeing this too on his or someone else's desk. One of my first customers told me that he found it really calming to just sit back and watch it run on the desk in front of him. That's the real fascination, watching old technology in action on your desk. In an increasingly virtual world, Berm's miniature desktops are reassuringly solid and straightforward. <laughs> 